Praise the Lord, in Yeshua HaMashiach all be blessed, I'm presenting here the Gospel in Genesis. A Hidden Message An Overview of Topics 1. An Integrated Message 2. A Study of Original Roots 3. The Flood Judgment 4. Gospel Through Genealogy 5. Evidence of Design 6. Sources We frequently use the familiar term Gospel, or Good News. Where is the first place it appears in the Bible? The answer may surprise you. An integrated message. The great discovery is that the Bible is a message system, it's not simply 66 books penned by 40 authors over thousands of years, the Bible is an integrated whole which bears evidence of supernatural engineering in every detail. The Jewish rabbis have a quaint way of expressing this very idea, they say that they will not understand the scriptures until the Messiah comes. But when he comes, he will not only interpret each of the passages for us, he will interpret the very words, he will even interpret the very letters themselves, in fact, he will even interpret the spaces between the letters. When I first heard this, I simply dismissed this as a colorful exaggeration. Until I reread Matthew 5, 17, 18. Think not that I have come to destroy the Torah and the prophets, I have not come to destroy but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. A jot and tittle are the Hebrew equivalent of our dotting an I and the crossing of a T. An example. A remarkable example of this can be glimpsed in Genesis chapter 5, where we have the genealogy of Adam through Noah. This is one of those chapters which we often tend to skim over quickly as we pass through Genesis it's simply a genealogy from Adam to Noah. But God always rewards the diligent student. Let's examine this chapter more closely. In our Bible, we read the Hebrew names. What do these names mean in English? A study of original roots. The meaning of proper names can be a difficult pursuit since a direct translation is often not readily available. Even a conventional Hebrew lexicon can prove disappointing. A study of the original roots, however, can yield some fascinating insights. A caveat, many study aids, such as a conventional lexicon, can prove rather superficial when dealing with proper nouns. Furthermore, Views concerning the meanings of original roots are not free of controversy and variant readings. Let's take an example. The Flood Judgment Methuselah comes from Muth, a root that means death, and from Shalich, which means to bring, or to send forth. The name Methuselah means, his death shall bring. Methuselah's father was given a prophecy of the coming Great Flood, and was apparently told that as long as his son was alive, the judgment of the flood would be withheld, but as soon as he died, the flood would be brought or sent forth. And, indeed, the year that Methuselah died, the flood came. It is interesting that Methuselah's life, in effect, was a symbol of God's mercy in forestalling the coming judgment of the flood. Therefore, it is fitting that his lifetime is the oldest in the Bible, speaking of the extensiveness of God's mercy. Gospel Through Genealogy Adam. Adam's name means man. As the first man, that seems straightforward enough. Seth. Adam's son was named Seth, which means, appointed. Eve said, For God hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel, whom Cain slew. Enosh. Seth's son was called Enosh, which means, mortal, frail, or miserable. It is from the root Anish, to be incurable used of a wound, grief, woe, sickness, or wickedness. It was in the days of Enosh that men began to defile the name of the living God. Kenan Enosh's son was named Kenan, which can mean sorrow, dirge, or elegy. The precise denotation is somewhat elusive, some study aids unfortunately presume that Kenan is synonymous with Kinan. Balaam, looking down from the heights of Moab, uses a pun upon the name of the Kenites when he prophesies their destruction. We have no real idea as to why these names were chosen for their children. Often they may have referred to circumstances at birth, and so on. Mahalalil Kenan's son was Mahalalil, 
from Mahalau which means blessed or praise, and El, the name for God. Thus, Mahalalol means the blessed God. Often Hebrew names include El, the name of God, as Daniel, God is my judge, etc. Jared. Mahalalol's son was named Jared, from the verb Yared, meaning shall come down. Enoch. Jared's son was named Enoch, which means teaching, or commencement. He was the first of four generations of preachers. In fact, the earliest recorded prophecy was by Enoch, which amazingly enough deals with the second coming of Christ, although it is quoted in the book of Jude in the New Testament. Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. To execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed, and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against. Jude 14 15. Methuselah. Enoch was the father of Methuselah, who we have already mentioned. Enoch walked with God after he begot Methuselah. Apparently, Enoch received the prophecy of the great flood, and was told that as long as his son was alive, the judgment of the flood would be withheld. The year that Methuselah died, the flood came. Enoch, of course, never died, he was translated, or, if you'll excuse the expression, raptured. That's how Methuselah can be the oldest man in the Bible, yet he died before his father. Lamech. Methuselah's son was named Lamech, a root still evident today in our own English word, lament, or lamentation. Lamech suggests despairing. This name is also linked to the Lamech in Cain's line who inadvertently killed his son Tubal Cain in a hunting incident. Noah. Lamech, of course, is the father of Noah, which is derived from Naxim, to bring relief or comfort, as Lamech himself explains in Genesis 5:29. Man, is, appointed mortal sorrow, but, the blessed God shall come down teaching, that, his death shall bring, the, despairing comfort. Here's the gospel hidden within a genealogy in Genesis. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away, Matthew 24, 35. Evidence of Design The implications of this discovery are more widespread than is evident at first glance. It demonstrates that in the earliest chapters of the book of Genesis, God had already laid out his plan of redemption for the predicament of mankind. It is a love story, written in blood on a wooden cross which was erected in Judea almost 2,000 years ago. The Bible is an integrated message system, the product of supernatural engineering. Every number, every place name, every detail, every jot and tittle is there for our learning, our discovery, and our amazement. Truly, our God is an awesome God. It is astonishing to discover how many biblical controversies seem to evaporate if one simply recognizes the unity and the integrity of these 66 books, penned by 40 authors over thousands of years. Sources That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, 9, 10. God bless you all.